this is Roger, thanks for dropping by. Um, Sunday chat today, I've got a subject, I'll let you know in a minute. Um, first things first, orchids to go, we've got um, Zana, Andrea and Julie to go. Your plants will be packaged up and in the post tomorrow. Um, basically there's a single plant, two unmounted um, plants and um, another box with two plants and a kiki in. So they're not big jobs like the last lot were. I tried to get the main big ones out of the way. So that shouldn't take me too long to put together and um, go around and see Postman Pat. We'll get that organised tomorrow. If I fail to do that tomorrow, it will happen on Tuesday. I want them out of the way. Yeah, I want them gone. Right, so that's that. Um, for a change up the front of the video, um, if you like watching the Sunday chats and you're not actually subscribed, it would be nice if you did so. As I often say, there are certain people that look at the word subscribed and think they've got to pay some money. It's, there is no payment to make. It's just an expression that YouTube chose that possibly could have been a better one. But yeah, um, it just basically... Um, means that on if you run if you've got your own channel if you use the subscriptions page you'll see my videos come up you'll see them posted and if you actually switch the notifications on as well you should get a notification which i believe is an email uh, probably what else would it be could be a text could it no i think it's an email um letting you know that i've posted a video um yeah, so that's that. So uh, those of you that haven't, if you would, that would be good. It helps the channel, helps the channel grow. It helps YouTube see it better, which means when people are doing random searches like um, growing on Sidiums, my channel can come up higher up that search list of answers. You know, down below, <laughs> down below Danny and Brad and a couple of others. <laughs> uh. I remember when I used to do searches on YouTube to find things about orchids. <laughs> no, I'm not saying this in a bad way, but I used to have to get past 20 or 30 of Danny's videos before I found anybody else. You know, as a channel, that's a good thing. <laughs> you can't knock that. And um, as far as orchid channels go, I doubt if anybody will ever get that large. It's just a massive channel. So be it. Right, now today's subject, I want to look at the larger Oncidium types. Most of them will be a quick look, and it's just really to sort of identify some of the differences in the Oncidium Alliance. Um, there are differences, just because they're all big, well, just because these are all big, doesn't mean they're all the same. They certainly have differences in light requirements, they certainly have different temperature requirements, although they're very tolerant. Um, <laughs> I'm excluding Miltoniopsis because we've only just had a look at them, so they won't be in today. Um, and they do have more specific requirements. And it's just that their requirements are more precise. It's, it's, it, that, that's all it is. You know, if you, if, if you get one that's, um, oh, it can put up with cooler temperatures, but it would prefer to be intermediate. That's what you call a tolerant orchid, as far as temperatures are concerned. You know, it likes bright light, but it will put up with medium light and still probably bloom. That means it's light tolerant. Yeah, well, the Miltoniopsis are quite precise. They have a certain environment where they're happy and will grow like flipping weeds, and anything other than that, and they're not happy. Whereas most of the other Oncidium types, I say most, not all, are pretty tolerant. Right, the first one, as it's under my nose, is the Brassia. Brassias are the spider orchids. They all have a spidery look to them. Um, this will have its spidery look to it once the flipping blooms open. Um, the spikes on this one are ridiculously long. Um, it's two thirds of a metre at least, possibly a bit more than that, maybe. Yeah. Certainly heading up that way anyway. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Looks like ten buds on this one. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Probably nine on that one. So nine or ten on each spike. And this plant currently, as a plant, is doing absolutely everything. Um, 
it is extending its root system. Root is, roots are even branching on the surface of the pot. You know, the so-called aerial ones. Down in the pot we have branching roots and we have new growths coming up all over the place and we have spikes growing and the new growths that the spikes have come off of are maturing um, a fraction smaller than the previous ones but not much. Um, this one here is Sarah's. I doubt if I'll ever get one that big. <laughs> But I'm, you know, as long as they bloom and produce the right number of leaves, I'm happy. Um, and new root, new growths on a brassia, the roots usually come later. They don't, they don't come at the same time as the new roots. They usually start going a bit later on, um, and they have quite a mad flush of roots against those new growths. That's handy to know. If you're thinking of repotting or you know or have to repot even worse and that's really the downside of most of the oncidium types if you wait till you have to repot you could lose a fair bit of your root system if you wait for the aforementioned good time which is when the new roots are just starting just after they've started or when you know they're going to start and that's the best way to be, I think, because then they're not there. So you can't damage them, can you? It is very easy to damage new roots that are like two or three centimetres long. The root tips are so delicate, they break off so easily, especially if you're trying to get the old media off right next to them. You know, it's a, it's a task that warrants an awful lot of care, quite honestly. But if you know that your plant produces it, its roots when the new growths are, say, three or four inches long then when those new growths are nearly three or four inches long you can get on and repot knowing they're coming soon that way any disturbance to the old roots doesn't matter as much because they're about to be replaced um, as i said if your new roots have already started growing that's a good time to repot with care so that's the brassias some of the blooms on the brassias are enormous. The blooms on here are 10 or 11 inches from top to bottom. That's a lot of bloom. So that's that one. We'll go back where we are. That, that can only live in one or two places in here at the moment because those spikes are so long. So it lives there at the moment where it doesn't get bashed around. Right, I'm just going to move around. I'm only picking up large oncidium types today. I'm not looking at smaller ones. It's just the larger ones. Um, so twinkles and things like that we'll do another time. There's going to be some in between. Which set do they go in? We'll just do the big ones today. Next are the two on here. These two are in our feeding project. Um, so this is um, Miltonia Moreliana allegedly some say it's a hybrid and it may well be i'm not fussed either way it's got gorgeous blooms on it and it's growing like a trooper so <laughs> does it matter it's just a name um now these these two this one and the next one were chosen because they're at a very very similar stage and when you're doing an experiment especially with to do with feeding or watering that sort of thing trying to get two plants that are almost identical is almost impossible now, these two are close that's why I chose to do it um, they had a pair as a pair of plants they both had four new growths so the new growths are at this stage on this one so they're opening their leaves um, not maturing a pseudo bulb yet they're too immature um, we've got one there next to the green label Two there, that's two, three, four. Uh, when it was repotted, they were all repotted around so that the new growths had plenty of room to grow, plenty of room for their roots, and possibly room for the next growth as well, which is good because in the case of this one, it started another new growth there, coming out of another, uh, coming out of one of the older bulbs. So that's, so that's the second new growth from that bulb. The first one being this one. And it may well be that the others will do the same thing. We shall see. We shall see. Anyway, this one is 
These are the size of the new growths. The leaves are opening, yeah? And look at the state of the roots underneath. They're just getting going. They're just doing their thing. So, that big before the new roots come. So it wouldn't be a good idea to repot that one just as the new roots start, would it? Because you've got a long wait. <laughs> yeah. Now that's a Miltonia um, uh, in the, in the Oncidium Alliance, obviously. And this is quite like a lot of the standard Oncidiums, in, uh, actual Oncidiums, in as much as it's a drinker when it's actively growing because it grows at a rate of knots. These new growths have pushed on really well. And when there's that many in the same pot, they're going to use up the moisture in the pot quite quickly. So um, it's important to keep up with them. If the roots keep going dry, these growths can stall and it won't mature as large as perhaps they should do. So keep up with your watering. <laughs> when they're at this particular stage, and in this case they're in relatively new media, I would suggest it's virtually impossible to overwater that. Mainly because of the relatively new media. It doesn't hold a lot of water. So when I water that, I drown it. Absolutely drown it. So that's that one. And then it's partner in crime, because they're both in the same project. Um, this is the Spectabili, allegedly. <laughs> Some people have said this is a hybrid as well. I doubt it very much, as it did actually come from Burnham's. I think Burnham's probably know the difference between a species and a hybrid. The problem was, a couple of people looked at its size and thought, well, Spectabilis doesn't normally grow that big. Well, perhaps it does if it's grown very well and fed, <laughs> instead of being starved. Anyway, this one was in a similar position, so where's our label? There's our, we had red for this one, so that I could differentiate between the two without scrabbling for the tag every time. So starting from there, we've got a new growth here, another one here, that's two, and then coming round here, three and four, and they've crossed over each other. <laughs> they were both coming out towards the middle of the pot, but they came out, uh, well, this one came out at an awkward angle, um, and they've crossed over again. If you look at the size of the new growths, the new growth, new roots are just getting going to a greater extent, yeah? And um, these are typical of uh, Miltonias. The new roots come out back up the rhizome, up to the point where the base of the new growth is, and go a bit further as well. So they produce new roots over quite bearing in mind a lot of them have elongated um, rhizomes, they produce their roots over quite a, quite a length of the rhizome. Yeah. So again, a very similar plant, as I said, four new growths. Um, it's, actual, it's actually several pieces, I forget how many. <laughs> now, how many of these new growths on these two plants do we expect to bloom? I'll stick my neck out and say all of them, but it might not be. Because of the disturbance, the older root system will have got tired. It, it will have not been as vigorous as far as feeding and watering that plant is concerned because of the disturbance. The new roots are getting going, hopefully in time, that there will be no shortage within those new growths and therefore there's strength enough in the plant for them to bloom. But maybe not all of them. We shall see. I'd like to think that all four new growths on both plants will bloom. But we won't know till it happens, will we? <laughs> right, let me just put these back because I need the space. Right, moving on. There is that. <laughs> I'm asking myself, is that an Oncidium Alliance plant? Well, I hope it is. It certainly looks like it. This is one of Jeff's. And this is... God. Anachelium. Pachycepulum. Now, I think that is actually um, Encyclia. Yeah? But, nonetheless, there's a few pieces in there. 
it's growing roots um, quite well. A lot seem to be going down in the pot and coming out the bottom. Some are going around the top. So it's establishing a good root system. There's lots of growing root tips all over the place. So I'm happy with the supply of roots. Now this had a lovely spike on it, but a slug had it, so we lost it. And I'm pretty sure there's another new growth somewhere that looks like it could bloom. But we'll have to wait and see. Now, I don't know anything about this. Never heard of it. As I said, the um, Anachelium element of its name, the genus, um, is like a synonym, I believe, um, recently probably allocated. I don't know for sure. <laughs> Do I sound bothered? <laughs> one way or the other, I don't mind. But anyway, one of Jeff's that seems to be growing reasonably well. Now we've got rain coming. Um, some of the older leaves are getting a bit um, tired, but on the on the recent growth, the leaves are fine. They're nice and green. So I, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm holding out hope that this is going to produce some new growths in the not too distant future. But I think it's at the stage where the new growths have not long matured. So it's in that stage where probably not much is going to happen for a while, where it ought to bloom. We shall wait and see. Right, any more around this side? Yep. That's not a big plant, but it is, if you know what I mean. It's the fact that it's... Um, <laughs> that's my Alisara Tahitian dancer that I've just split. I split it so that somebody could have half of it. So we've recently looked at that one. That's just... Um, if it's an Alisara, um, if that's true, you know what these flipping into generic names are like, then that will have probably one element of a cool grower in it and the other elements, two or more, won't be cool growers. So this doesn't need to be treated special. It's the odontoglossums and the um, cochleodas that are the pain in the intergenerics as those are cool growers. Um, they come from much higher elevations than a lot of the other oncidium types. And as a consequence, they put that cool bit into them and make them a bit more fussy than some of the others. Um, this should be okay. Um, it's not growing its roots yet, it's starting them. So it's not long repotted. So uh, that needs to stay there out of the way for a minute while I get another big one out. Now this is probably one of the only oncidiums in here, or one of the few, that hasn't actually been repotted since I got it. And that's because it wasn't long potted up by Sarah at Burnham's, and it's in Burnham's bark. There's no rush. <laughs> no rush at all. This is good bark in here. This is good stuff. Yeah. Um, a lot of aerial roots on this one. Um, now, if I'd repotted this, I might have sunk it in a bit lower. Um, so that there wouldn't have been quite so many aerial roots. But this is growing new roots again. It's at the same sort of stage as the, um, as the other two Miltonias that we looked at in the feeding problem. And this is Miltonia reginellii, um, another species. And again, the new growths are at this stage. So they're maturing. They've done their roots. That, that's all done and dusted now. There won't be, won't be any more. And starting from the label, we've got one, two, three, four. That's four on there as well. <laughs> Sarah obviously has a precise um, number of bulbs when she divides the big specimen plants. You're not having any more than that. That's all you're having. <laughs> uh, but anyway, the, the, the roots have gone around the top of the pot. They're down in the pot. They're hanging out the side. More than enough roots on here. It's in good media. No reason to repot. We will think about repotting at the next stage of the new roots. Now I've got to go a bit careful with this one, trying to work out when that stage is. Because all these roots are there, and a fair few of these roots are on the old bulbs, not on the latest growths. That's because it wasn't repotted, it hasn't been disturbed, so you can still see them all near the surface. So I don't know exactly when the roots come out on this one. Being a Miltonia, like the other two, probably at a similar stage. 
but then that's a mass of roots to have on those new growths um, already when the growths are at this size. But again, um, you know, I don't see any reason why those new growths shouldn't bloom. We shall see. That's another biggie, that one. And um, when that gets repotted, unless I want to put it in a bucket, one will become two or possibly three. Don't all scream now. It's at least a year away. <laughs> and if you want one of those and you're in the UK, Sarah's got loads of them. And, well, unless they've all gone. Certainly when I picked mine up, there were loads there. It took me ages to choose one. <laughs> I'd rather there was only one or two, then the decision is really easy. <laughs> is it this one or this one? Um, right, more big stuff. I don't think there's anything up there, is there? Well, there is, but um, it's a recent one off of um, Burnham, so we recently looked at that. There's no biggies there. Well, I suppose this, this ought to be a biggie, but it's had such a flipping setback that it's not as big as it should be. This is my Soto Annum, <laughs> for once a genuine Oncidium. Um, this is um, half of, well, a half or a third of most of the twinkles um, and gets into an awful lot of hybrids, this one. Um, now these, there were two, one's gone to somebody else. They got messed up by me. Um, you know what I've just said, when these things are in active growth, they're drinkers. Well, it pays not to let them dry out then especially when they've got one of the finest root systems of the Oncidium world. So, um, I mean, this has got a root system the same as a twinkle, which is a miniature. And this can grow into quite a large plant with those same tiny fine roots. And if they dry out when it's in active growth, they frazzle. And that's what happened. So I basically lost my root system. Now, some of the roots are recovering, but this is a very weak root system at the moment not doing very well. I've got two very, very poor new growths here, one of which has formed a minute pseudo bulb. That's not very good at all. Uh, I don't think that one's going to grow anymore, so my hope is with this one in here. I'm hoping that that one's going to push on to a reasonable size and aid the root mass. So, um, so this one's got some recovering to do. Uh, but you can see, like, you know, some of the uh, leaves on the older part of the plant, it can grow into a very large plant. And when growing well, can do it incredibly quickly. You'll often get two new growths from a bulb. So if you've got a four or five bulb plant, y you know, you can, you can double its size very quickly. Um, quite vigorous, <laughs> provided you don't knock the roots off. Duh. <laughs> I was so cross about that. But it was a heat wave and, you know, it was just using the water up far faster than anything else I had. And you know what I'm like, I have a watering schedule, like so today these plants are getting watered. Yeah, well that one didn't. It should have been watered more frequently and it, I didn't keep up with it. And so we lost the roots and we had to start again. And when you're starting again with a large plant, it's difficult. Now. I'm going to show this, even though it's not a big one, simply because this crept up on me. This also came from Jeff's. This is um, an Odontoglossum, probably now Oncidium, um, Naevium. And we got a spike. Yay! That <laughs> just snuck up on me. Actually, we've got two. There's another one down in there. You can see that one. There's one there. Woo! Try to get the leaves out of the way, and then puts his hand in the way. Very good. So we've got one coming up in the middle of the plant, um, one hanging out the side of the plant. I wouldn't be surprised to see a couple more. That is lots of pieces. That's not a plant. That's, I think there's about five pieces in there, all small and all virtually rootless, but they had new growths on them. Um, it's still not going mad with the roots, but it has it started some roots in places, but it's still virtually rootless. Not very good at all, but it will produce them. So that's just getting shown purely because there's spike crept up on me. We've got another one of those in a minute, creeping up on me. Right, on with the bigger ones. Oh. We did once get all these plants off these lower shelves, didn't we? It's a good job my back's okay nowadays. Right, so this is classed as a Cambria. 
which is just a random name basically. A lot of the traders use the word Cambria when they haven't got another one. So they just, oh, just, just call it a Cambria, that'll do, Cambria hybrid. Um, and then put houseplant on the label, you know, that sort of thing. <laughs> they really don't care, do they? The mass-produced ones, they've got plants with pretty blooms on to go to supermarkets, DIY stores, garden centres. And in their mindset, they, they believe that the people that are going to be buying them in those sort of places don't care what it's called. Well, some of us do. Doesn't, doesn't matter, they don't take any notice of us. Right, so this is um, Shades of Purple. Um, as none of these are in blooms, uh, can I be bothered? Yeah, I will. Sunday chat. It's, it's probably most, my most popular video. I'll do the pop-ups with the names and the pretty pictures for those that have bloomed, which is most of them. So uh, this is a very attractive plant, which is why I got it. It's growing new roots in various places. It didn't lose its old root system. And at the moment, it's got a new growth coming up there and another new growth here, so that's two. What about you? Have you got a new growth? No? Why not? Come on, keep up. So we've got a couple of new growths coming on this one. Um, again, in theory, there's enough strength in that plant. You know, we've got pretty plump pseudo bulbs here. Um, there's enough strength in that plant for those new growths to bloom, but that's a fair way down the track. These new growths on this one are quite new. Um, Anyway, that's uh, that one. Coming on, I don't know how long ago I repotted that, but not a huge amount of time ago. We won't find any of the large Oncidium types that haven't been repotted reasonably recently. I had a, a session where I thought, right you lot, you're all getting done. I'm getting fed up with root loss. Now this one, this one's got a proper name. Well, starting with Bialara, are we, are we talking about a proper name? Bearing in mind that means it's an intergeric, intergeneric with a certain number of genera, of precise selection. I'm not going into it, but um, the chances are at least one of those has been reclassified, so Bialara might not be accurate anymore. But it's Memoria Donald Yamada. So it's actually got a proper name, this one. And um, I've put this one in the, uh, one of these opaque things. You notice quite a lot of these plants haven't got their um, black pots around them yet. I'm waiting for the next session when I water to, to get that done. I've been a bit um, slack on that. Now what we've got here is a little old growth bulb, leafless. I'm not quite sure why I kept that. Probably because there was only two. Um, then it's got another leaved bulb, so this was a very small plant, yeah, very small. But what it's got now is a nice, large, fat new growth, with leaves larger than on the previous one. Um, whether the bulb will be the same size, I don't know. It's growing roots, so it's, at the, it's gone past the stage where the roots have started. They're pushing on quite nicely, and the growth is... Uh, also coming on nicely, so uh, yeah, not my favourite bloom, but nonetheless attractive. Whereas this one, the one that just says Cambria, <laughs> Cambria hybrid brackets shades of purple. I suspect that's from memory. That's a good one. That's one I like a lot. Ugh. Right, that's that shelf. No more piggies on there. It only leaves one more shelf, does it? Yes. Right, you'll have to get out of the way. Ugh. I still haven't managed to get that picture done of this. This is the one that's going in the um, virtual competition, Dendrobium Herco Blossom, but I've got to play with it. It's still got so many buds to open on it. I'm waiting. You know, every day there's a few more buds opening, the more the merrier. But uh, let me just get that out of the way for a minute. There. I need to get at this top shelf now. Put that out the way. Go there. And 
Right. Oh, there's quite a few on this shelf. Right, this one's just been repotted, so you've just seen this on video. This is Brassia Santa Barbara. It got split in two. Um, so one part of this got quite extended um, rhizomes on this, they're quite long. So it's going to be out of the pot, they always are, pain in the news, pain in the whatnot. But the piece at the back there is heading off in that direction, this piece is heading off in that direction. New roots are now, they're just starting. And they're big fat chunky roots on that one. Some have already gone down in the pot, yeah. And this had quite a lot of roots already on it when it was repotted but you'd never guess because it was repotted with those new roots down in the pot away from the edge of the pot so that I could actually get the media down the edge without breaking the roots so there's a lot of new roots on those pieces but they're down inside the pot and um, hopefully they will carry on growing along with some of the newer ones that are only just coming out at the top so uh, yeah two new growths pushing on Leaves are not quite full size, they've still got a little bit of growing to do. Um, as brassias go, this plant is a bit smaller than some of the others. I forget how long the spikes are. <laughs> right, this was the other spike that snuck up on me. This is, um, it says, it says, oh. Odontocidium, well, possibly, <laughs> and it's Irish mist. Um, this one did the rounds over the last few years, um, so quite a lot of people would probably have this one. Now, on this one, this I believe was in that um, cocoa peat stuff, so I had to come out as soon as possible, and as a consequence, it didn't have a good root system. And as a consequence, you can see that the older pseudobulbs have shriveled quite badly. They've kept their leaves, that's good. They're not going to plump up again. But obviously what we've got now is a big fat new growth, which is producing a spike. One, two, three, four. That will have five or six blooms on it down the line. These are attractive blooms. I, I remember this one. I do like this one a lot. Um, but so far... Unfortunately, the new root started there, I don't know whether you're going to be able to see this, there, on the end of my finger, under a sheath. So they pointed upwards, and I took the sheath off, and blow me, that night a slug took the lot right off. So nearly, the, virtually the whole set of new roots on that growth got bitten off by a slug. And when they've been bitten off that tight to the base, they're not going to grow. They've lost their growing tip, so they can't branch, they're too short. So I'm not quite sure what's going to happen with this one. I'm not sure well, as far as the roots are concerned. But um, hopefully it will be putting some more up. <laughs> yeah, it would be good, wouldn't it? Um, right, there's another one. Oh. This is going in. Um, this one's um, doing what it should be doing. This is Oncidium Wildcat Bobcat. Uh, this came from Burnham's from the nursery so uh, rather than it would have been bought in originally um, but then it probably just got repotted because nobody bought it and stuck out in the nursery um, and the new growth here is pushing on nicely and boy has that got a shed load of roots coming out that is a mass of roots I don't know whether you're capable of seeing these down in there but there is a mass of roots down there and they are between that long and that long. So they're going to be down, they're just starting in places to show down in the pot. But being one of those opaque pots, they don't show up quite so well. But it saves me putting it inside a black pot. And out of the um, wild cats that I've had in the past, all of which have been lost one way or another, one got given away because I didn't like it. <laughs> I just went off the blooms. Um, well, that's the fattest wildcat bulb I have ever seen. It's enormous. Um, if mine gets anywhere near as big as that, I'll be over the moon. But a single new growth um, with a good root system to support it, there's no reason why that shouldn't bloom down the line. No reason at all. So we should have some uh, wildcat blooms down the line.
Oh, we'll have to stop soon, I've run out of coffee. Actually, this is the last one. He scans desperately, making sure. Yeah, that'll do for the last one. I can't see any more on sitting types that are large. Um, right, what is this one then? Um, ah, now this has still got its original tag and it's Oncidium Cheyenne and this is a strange one because I'm almost certain, not definite, but I'm almost certain that came from Burnham's but it's not a Burnham's tag so where did they get it from? It's not one Sarah would have produced in the nursery, you know, one of her own. But anyway, um, this one did a very strange thing. Um, it produced a new growth that was, a fact, was in fact a pear. I've never seen that before. So it was, it, as it emerged, it was a single growth. And then as it opened, it had two growing tips when it was this sort of big. It looked very odd. Um, and they'd both grown on and separated. Um, yeah. Not um, hydrating as well as it should have done. Probably lost, um, probably was in that cocoa peat, possibly, I don't know, I can't remember. But these two new growths are not hydrating as well as they should because the leaves are actually pleated. Um, and they still are. So it's difficult to work out what this one's up to. Why is it not growing properly? Um, but there's two growths there to work with. Now it may well be because of that split, and that's some sort of genetic problem, I don't think that's natural. Um, it may well be that these two growths don't mature properly and we'll have to wait for more. And hopefully they'll be next time these will work as individual growths and not as a sort of conjoined pair uh, and they'll produce two separate new growths in different directions um, but you know there's a bit of time to wait for that so I don't think that's going to bloom it's, you know I just don't think these are pushing on as well as they ought to be and it may well have something to do with that fact but there are a few root tips in the pot not many but some so those growths are producing some roots but not many. So it hasn't got a very good root system, that one. Right, so that's the, um, that's the big Oncidiums. Um, as I said, these are... Uh, the way I vary these, light-wise, is um, I try and sort of, where possible, work out have you got Brassia in you? Because out of the Oncidium Alliance types, the Brassias are probably the highest light requirements. Um, so if there's some Brassia in there, it can go on a, you know, on a top shelf, uh, you know, which is good light. Not quite as high as Catlia light, but good light. And then um, if it's got Odontoglossum in there, then it needs to come well away from that shelf. And you will get some, no doubt, that have got Odontoglossum and Brassia in them. What are you supposed to do with that then? You've got a warmer grower and a cool grower and a high light and a low light. What are you going to do with that then? Do like the rest of us do and guess. <laughs> Somewhere in the middle is the expression. Somewhere in the middle. But I keep the Brassias close to the glass and the other types set back behind other plants so that they've got some form of shading. You can go back up where you came from. And then sometime this week I'm going to have to get that photo done. Ooh, that's going to be difficult. Notice the Dendrobium nestor is going. They don't last long, do they? Never mind. I suppose we could count this one. I oh, keep forgetting this one. It's on a mount. Um, this is a Miltonia. Um, it's um, had major disturbance and got mounted, so the, the growths aren't as large as they will be. But it's got two new growths on it, one up here and one down here. And the other part of this plant, because it was grown off in two directions, has gone off to somebody else. They got the better version. Their root system was more advanced. But um, you can see on here, that's, that, you know, the roots 
st that's how big the growth is and the roots are just coming now. So again, a bit late. And that's a Miltonia castanea, which is a natural hybrid, a naturally occurring hybrid. Um, at least one of those growths should bloom. But I mean, you can see that, uh, you know, if, if it was growing well, it does have quite large leaves and it is a fair sized plant. Um, attractive blooms, um, and hopefully we will see them when these uh, two growths mature. I think that's the only of the, only one of the larger um, oncidiums that I've actually mounted. Uh, he says scanning round again. Yeah, yeah, not anymore. So there we go. That's today's Sunday chat. Hope you've enjoyed that. Um, actually, I'll add these. Where's my time? I always have trouble finding the time. It's forty minutes. Um, all right, two more. <laughs> and these aren't big, but they should be. And I don't know what they are. Well, I do, <laughs> but I don't know which one's which. When I potted these up, they didn't get tagged. One of them is Oncidium, or now called something else, Sweet Sugar, the typical dancing lady, and the other is um, the Shelob Tolkien, which is Bratonia, isn't it? Something like that. <laughs> Intergeneric anyway, but Brassia type. And I don't know which one's which. I've just lost track. I don't know. <laughs> uh, this one here is growing a new growth and has started to produce some roots. So that one's coming on. And then this one um, grew a new growth that didn't bloom. And now it's growing a new growth from that growth, but it's gone back to the previous bulb and pushed out another one. So this has got two new growths coming on it. And as you can see, this one's got a good root system and it's now pushing up. See, some of these roots are fine. That's what happens when the roots are not growing as well as they should be. And that's what happens when they start growing properly again. Again, nice, big, fat, sturdy roots, you know, with a center lo centimeter long growing tip on them. Um, some of which, luckily, are going to get down in the moss. Um, some of which may be aerial. Yeah, I'm always forgetting those two. Um, <laughs> as I said, I've forgotten which one's which, I just can't remember, can't remember, but as I said, we, we, you know, we, we know what the blooms look like, um, and when they eventually get round to blooming again, um, the um, Shelob Tolkien got set back by going to Mulvern, it's happened quite a few times when plants have gone there, it's a lot of disturbance, the travelling, um, you know, they're travelling for quite a while. Um, they get there on Thursday, sort of lunchtime, and they leave Sunday evening. And I'm pretty sure a lot of the time they get left in the wagon overnight when they get back Sunday because it's late. Um, so they don't, they don't have a good time. And they're in that marquee with um, sometimes ridiculously high temperatures. But sometimes it gets quite cold at night, with you know, with 100% humidity, basically. It's on grass, and with that number of plants in there that are getting watered, it's just, it's not good. So that's what knocked that one back. <laughs> anyway, we leave it at that for today. Big Oncidiums, and maybe, possibly not next Sunday, but another Sunday, we'll do the rest of the Oncidiums, which will be the smaller ones and the Twinkles, and see how they're coming on. Because we, you know, a lot of those were in bloom um, back sort of during the winter into early spring. And, you know, they're, they're, in theory, they don't get looked at again until the spikes start. Well, it's, it's quite a long gap in between, you know. It'd be nice to have a look, see how the new growths are doing and root systems and stuff. So we may have a look at those next time round. And um, thanks for dropping by. Don't forget the old thingy, thumbs up. I don't know whether that does any good nowadays. Um, that may not do any good either quite honestly but I can assure you I take no notice of it. <laughs> if you want to make constructive criticisms put it in the comments in words so that we know what you're on about and other people can see it as well then and I can take it on board if necessary but doing that achieves absolutely nothing. Nothing at all. <laughs> and as I said I'm not sure that, that makes a lot of difference to YouTube either nowadays. They don't even show you the difference anymore. They, on my stats, it just nets it. 
you know, it says 97% likes, which obviously means there's 3% that, that were dislikes. But it doesn't tell you how many. <laughs> you know, 90% of, 97% of 10, 97% of 150. It's, those stats are useless nowadays. I'm interested in the number of views and the comments that come in. That's the bit that interests me that I enjoy. Yeah? But as I said, if you uh, if you could subscribe if you're not already if you haven't already done so, that helps the channel as a whole. Yeah? So uh, and see you next time. Thanks for dropping by.